Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we are taking a look at the SSL G Bus Compressor, a classic staple. It's found in a ton of SSL consoles in some form or another. Either it's you know one of the originals way back in the 1980s, or it is a recreation. There's a duality at the place I work, and there is a recreation of this. Uh, built right into the duality. So very famous compressor has been on tons of records and today Universal Audio has made it available to us in a plug-in format with all the good modeling we have come to expect from Universal Audio. So without further ado, let's dive into it. First up, we've got the threshold. The threshold is the level audio must reach before the compressor starts turning on. You'll begin to see the needle move in the meters when compression begins to happen. When sound passes the threshold, the compressor has to start compressing. And that is what the job of the attack is. How quickly the compressor turns on and begins to turn down the signal once it's past the threshold. When the level goes back down below the threshold, we need to turn the compressor off. That is the job of the release. When audio passes the threshold, we have to decide how much we're gonna turn it down by. Do we turn it down a little or do we turn it down a lot? And that is determined by the ratio. A low ratio means sound can still pass the threshold, but it is just kind of slowed down. A high ratio, in this case, 10 is our highest, means that as sound passes the threshold, it will be turned down more aggressively to keep it from going very far past that threshold. In compressors, there is a detector circuit that determines when the compressor should be turning the volume up or down, and then you have your actual audible result. So there are two separate circuits, and that is what the sidechain section is all about. Sometimes you have signals in your compression signal that you don't necessarily want controlling when the compressor turns on and off. Uh, for example, kick drums are a common thing we want to remove. So that is the job of the sidechain filter. The middle control here is the Headroom DB. It's unique to the plugin. It's not found on the hardware unit. Its job is to control a reference level in the compressor, making the compressor more or less driven. Meaning if you want more compression, you can turn this knob and it will give you even more because internally it will see a higher level. It's a touch fancier than that. You can dive into the manual if you wanna see all the details about this little knob, but that's how I think of it. The mix control allows us to mix some of our uncompressed signal back in. And this is pretty common. You'll make a very squash sound and then you can bring back the mix control so that maybe there's half of it is the compressed squash sound and the other half is unsquashed. This is referred to as parallel compression and it's one of the most common use cases for why we touch the mix knob. At the very bottom, there's a control that's kind of unique. It is a auto fade feature. It allows you to do fade ins and outs. I do not make use of this feature very much in favor of just volume automation, but it is something that is very useful on the hardware unit for just getting a fade of a specific length right away. You just set your rate, you push auto fade, it'll fade out. If you push it again, it'll fade back in.
All right, with the controls done, let's go ahead and look at some examples. First, let's take a look at it on a bus. So this is my contact bus. This is being processed in real time and I have a low buffer size right now for the sake of recording. And so for that reason, you may hear the occasional click and pop, but let's go ahead and take a look. So I have this orchestral theme that sort of develops over time. It starts out pretty soft. Let's make sure that it's off at the beginning and it's kind of long. So I'll just play for you the first section and then we'll look at the ending. Uh, this is what it sounds like. So that's our input. Near the end, we get much louder. It sounds like this. So let's go ahead and turn on the compressor. There's a few decisions I made here. First, I want this area over here to sound relatively the same. And I want this area over here that's much softer to just be a bit louder at the beginning. The SSL uh, G compressor is amazing as a bus compressor. It just kind of does great things for bringing stuff together. So when it gets louder, it actually can handle a pretty high level of compression without much issue. So I've chosen to give it a pretty moderate attack. All the sounds in here are pretty sustained. So I don't see any reason to worry too much about a fast or a slow attack. Um, once it turns on, it's pretty much gonna be on. It's more like a general volume move at that point. I set the threshold after just looking for the amount of needle movement I want. Um, I want it pretty aggressive. So we're gonna be sitting here between four, eight, and sometimes dip back behind the eight. The ratio is as high as it can go. Uh, the makeup gain is very aggressive to match what's going on here. And I left the release on auto. I've chosen to filter out everything in the in uh, the low end because I don't want that stuff influencing it. There's not a there's not a ton going on, but I chose to remove it anyways. And everything else is pretty much, I think, default. Uh, I may have touched this to adjust uh, the amount of compression if I wasn't seeing the amount of movement I wanted. This little screw in the middle is awesome. You can just sort of turn this up till you get it. So here's what the beginning sounds like now. Again, here's the before real quick since we've not heard it in a second. So here's what it sounds like. And then here it is with it. Quite a bit louder. So real quick, just so you have a reference near. So real quick, let's hear it again before. And here it is after. Now that we're done with the controls, let's go ahead and dive into an example. Now that we're done with the controls, let's go ahead and dive into an example. So here I've got a track, it's called Blue Eyes, and there's a lot of instrumental contact-based instruments going on. Uh, they sound like this, it's going to bypass the compressor. At the beginning, it's very orchestral. Here's where we are at the ending. 
So this is the area I want to compress. I basically have two goals. First, I want to squish it somewhat heavily and I want to bring up this softer part and I want to tame the horn back a little bit. I like where it sits right now. I just like things to be a little bit closer. So I'm going to do that by first dropping on the G compressor. It's great at bus work, so this is perfect. I have the threshold set so that I get a, a pretty aggressive amount of compression. We're talking about between 8 and 12 uh, dB of compression. So that's a lot uh, by most standards. And we have here our makeup gain is pretty heavy. So this is also kind of acting as a general fader move for me, just so at the beginning it's just louder. But it will work out well when things, everything starts coming in over here. It'll actually sound pretty similar. It's pretty surprising. The attack I left at 3 because the sound coming into this, once it triggers, it's pretty much going to stay on 24-7. So I didn't feel too much pressure about like nailing the attack time. I just kind of left it where it was. Releases on auto. And I gave it the highest amount of compression we can get. So it's going to try and sit around this threshold level that I've set. And then this makeup gain is going to give us that boost. So at the beginning, it's going to sound more just like a volume boost. But over here, it'll even out really nicely. In the sidechain area, I did choose to filter out the bass stuff. And this allows just the higher stuff to control what the compressor is doing. Not a super big thing with this particular content because it's all just the orchestral bits. None of the drums or anything are going through here. If you don't see the amount of compression you want, you can adjust the screw here to get it. And that's pretty much it. So let me show you the difference. So before it was pretty soft, sounded like this. Very, very quiet. And now we have, you'll see it doesn't even work. The, the makeup game will do all this at the beginning. to the end before it sounded like this. We'll put it like it measure 27. Here it is after. Remarkably similar given this somewhat aggressive setting with quite a bit of makeup gain. And that's one of the beauties of a bus compressor. We can have the beginning get brought up nicely, it transitions in, and you know, it just sounds really good as we go through. Let's take a look at another example. All right, our next example is a drum bus. If we turn off the compressor on it and just give it a listen, this is what we have. Now let's go ahead, turn it on, and let's give the compressor a whirl. So I'd like to actually bring up the transients some. So we want to target things that are not the transients. To do this, we're going to give it a very fast, or I'm sorry, a very slow attack. Uh, we don't want it to turn on in time for the transients. We also want it to turn off very quickly so the next transient has a chance to get through. Now transient smearing will probably occur, meaning there'll be some transients that are still affected, but we're gonna go ahead and give it a very fast release and a pretty long attack. This has an interesting sort of pumping sound to it, and I actually think it'll work well if we mix it in in parallel. We're going to bring down the threshold and let's pick out a ratio of makeup gain by ear. So just as a reference, this was our before. And here it is after. So you can already hear some of this like sucking motion where it's taking out more of that sustained area. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring up the makeup game. And let's try out the different ratios. Now 
Now let's go ahead and bring down the mix. So here it is, unmixed. One hundred percent mixed, and at a fifty percent. We'll give it a little bit more, make it thin. do a bypass. That's our before. That's our after. If we were to reverse this with a fast attack, we should see the needle move in time with the drums. When the drum hits, this should move. This is gonna have some level, uh, this is gonna have some really aggressive pumping, a fast attack and release, but check it out. We move this back. Before, after. Bring in everything else. So that's the SSL G compressor. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. Go check it out. There's a link below where you can get this plugin. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.